Welcome, everybody. What's going on? It is Tuesday, February 8th. This is episode 25, mm. quarter century mark of the Heavyweight Bros podcast. Quarter of water. water. Mm. And I'm your host, your boy, the Diabolical Diabetic, the 5XL Assassin. I thought I had another nickname and I lost it, but it's your boy, <laughs> the Big Nasty. To my right. Stop with the mumbles. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> this piece of mumbles. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right is the high yellow hit man, Coach Buck, the freaking dickie, my man, Uncle Brazen. What's going on, man? How are you doing? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was super close. I was trying real I'm hard. I'm like, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> trying real hard not to do Nazi art. Nazi art. <laughs> I was just like, Beyonce slay hands. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. Uh, okay. You know, I feel uh, like she's always like, what? About, oh, no, I know. <laughs> what the fuck wasn't doing good. I'm great now. <laughs> nah, it's, um, I was going to flick your lip real quick, like real, light, it, like real lightly. It, stop it. Like the barbershop <laughs> commercials, they, I mean, little videos they be doing. You need a light so when you turn it low. Away from me, man. Right, yeah. How you doing? I, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm a little protective. I'm about to put my little bubble up, man, for, for some personal space. <laughs> yeah, it's got me a little concerned today but now i'm good man these jeans <laughs> <laughs> yes those <laughs> get out my way like, no, no, no. i banged the yeah. that's out of my finger yeah, yeah. one more time with them hot sausages <laughs> ah! no i'm doing good though i'm sorry man how are you i was doing good until <laughs> my feelings were hurt man. Go oh. to the hot sausage oh. like seven can't nothing hurt more than you losing riri ooh, ooh, ooh. So the first topic that we got on the plane. <laughs> nah, but um, what you call it? I feel like the Friday day off, I thought it was gonna be a lot more refreshing. And on Monday, they were like, nah, bro, that just means we refreshed. <laughs> and it was like that's all they did. It was like, yo. Bro, it was like, ah, the mother's just tapping in, <laughs> knocking in. Right. <laughs> they wasn't never late. <laughs> Everybody was on time for school on Monday. But I gotta say, like, I feel like uh like time slowed down a bit when I was like, I was pulling up to pod and stuff like that. I was like, ah, I was like, yo, pod is I was so good. That's what's up. <laughs> Breaking up my week positively. Up. That's what's up. 14 suspensions, but it's all right. <laughs> Positively. Ugh, you have to ruin everything. <laughs> and I'm going to be rough with your things. You know who doesn't ruin things? My boy G Head over at Custom Merch. Over there with them quick turnarounds over on IG and SU. Just search up Custom Merch. Put in the promo code Heavyweight Bros HW, the number A B R O S. Give you 10% off your order. Because the more you spend, the more you say. We, our, my man told us not to put that up no more. Oh, my bad. You got to remember that, remember? Oh, but you can put it up. You can put it up now. Oh, and then, uh, so we got to give a shout out to the man who did our intro, our boy Young King over there. Make sure y'all hit him up on IG, on IG, on Spotify, on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Check out the man's work. He's working on a video coming soon for the intro. Mm. Maybe we give you. Maybe we don't. Maybe we do a verse. I'm just saying. You still seem like you ducking these verses. I don't know. I don't want to embarrass nobody. You like yourself? What was that? What was that movie with... Uh... Uh, Bernie Mac in it when he was a swim teacher. And he was like, Pride? Yeah, he was like, Coach, you gonna get in the pool? He's like, Nah, I don't wanna make none of y'all embarrassed. <laughs> he's a janitor in that movie, wasn't he? Was he the janitor? I thought he was a coach. I think he's a janitor. Either way, it was still a good movie. R.I.P. It was it because I definitely did not watch it. Yeah, Pride, anything with Bernie Mac in it is good for me. I think Bill Burr said it best. He was like, I draw my, my line at White Gill at swimming. <laughs> he's like, yeah. he's like, he's like uh, what is there just uh, one guy like, get him out for water. <laughs> they don't belong in the pool. <laughs> and there's a persevere through backstrokes. Like, what's that turn You can't even hear people. You should hear in the water. I don't care what you're saying. Like, I mean, we booked this time. That's all there is to it. Right. Talking about. Hey, I'm here with it. All right, so you want to hop right into it? Let's get into it. Let's dig into right. these crazy, boy. No diggity. No doubt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the hum game is crazy. <laughs> That's the hum for me. Hum the hum. Right. So a um, couple, couple EPs, LPs, how we figure that Just out? Just say songs. All right. A couple so, new songs drop. Okay. Uh, uh, first one, have you listened to them? Oh, yeah, listen to both of them joints. I have listened to one as both of them as well. The first one is Push Your T. With a cameo of Kanye Puff Daddy dancing in the back of the video yeah. <laughs> called uh, King Push Diet Coke. Yeah, I was gonna say the beat came in, his voice came on, and I was in. Like yeah. halfway through the song, I was like, "Yeah, I was gonna say the same." I felt like I, I I got really excited and then really unexcited in a short turnaround. But like, um, like see, the thing is, like, you don't be on Twitter, man. Like, I feel like Twitter went crazy. They were like, "Yo, Coke rap is back." 
I was like, first of all, the butcher been here, boy. Right. Coke rap been around. Stop playing with these Griselda boys. If Griselda isn't on this Pusha T album, he's doing something incorrectly, right? Yes. Like he's got like this. I feel like it's a it's a match made. Can we get a track that has Pusha T, the Griselda boys, and the Locks or D Lock oh. on it? And it's just like, yo, just like somebody might have to do time after that. <laughs> that what, sounds what, crazy. a special guest appearance by Beanie Siegel. That it's like, sounds like, crazy. <laughs> All right, so if you could guess a feature that's on the album, what would you say? Uh, that's the thing is, like, there's not much, because, like, even on his last album, he did a feature. It's got to be, like, some R&B joint. He's going to have, like, Ari Lennox on it or something like that. Okay. I'm a, but, like, if I was to take a shot in the dark of, like, what rapper is going to be on there, I'm going to go with what's call it. I'm going to say Benny's on there. Okay. I feel like he's real, real hot, and I feel like he's, like, everybody's now putting him on their stuff. I'm gonna go with 21 Savage because I feel like he's jumping on everybody's album. <laughs> like by the time all of y'all are done, I'm just gonna borrow these songs I was with you and make my own album. Am I mad about it? Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. But it's just like I think about how uh like Kanye and them work. Mm -hmm. And it's just like who would they let in the studio to like come in there or something like that? And Lil Baby. For some reason, Kanye really likes Lil Baby. Okay. So like Okay. I just don't know if he fits the push a T sound like the like the, like Lil Baby's not gritty enough. He be singing I was about, about to say Lil Baby's probably not gonna care. You're gonna think it's his song by the time he's done. That's how he gets. It's like, yeah, I need 16. All right, I bought 36. <laughs> it's like, all right, we don't need all of that. That's fine. I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> like, so but we'll see. It seems like it's highly anticipated. Are you did, first of all, did you bump Daytona? Like, was that like your album? Like when Push a T dropped that one? No. Okay. So like I did. I've always been a huge Clips fan. Mm -hmm. I like Pusha T solo stuff. I don't think it, I didn't think like because he he was up for, or did he win album of the year? The year that Daytona came out, and I was like, I didn't see that. Was that? I think that that was 2018. Yeah, because I was really sour on the fact that like Kanye used the uh, Whitney Houston Houston's uh, yeah. uh mirror or Vanity as the album. Oh, that was that album. Yeah, I, yeah. that really really bothered me. I yeah. like the music going in. But I was like, it was only eight songs. Like that was back when like Kanye was trying to prove that you could make eight song albums and people yeah. would still listen to it, all that stuff. And I was like, it was cool. I liked it, but I didn't think it was that great. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I like Pusha. I'm gonna keep it out. Like I tell yeah, you, I like, like I saw yeah, I, like I was Pusha. like, oh, new Pusha out. I was like, I, I definitely like went listen to it. So yeah. I was there for it. Yeah. The song was just it yeah. sizzled, but I didn't think it burnt up. Yeah, I think this was just a little a little appetizer. A little, a little taste. Yeah, a little teaser. A little, a little sample. Teaser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so and the other one was uh YG Scare Money featuring J. Cole and Moneybag Yo. YG didn't even need to be on this song. No. <laughs> I feel like no. I feel like this was a J. Cole Money Bag Yo venture. Mm -hmm. The song's okay again. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like it was lukewarm. Yeah, it wasn't something I, I was anxious to add to the morning rotation. I thought J. Cole had the best verse, but it still wasn't a great verse. But I thought Moneybag Yo was about to have the best verse, and then for some reason it just stopped. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like he was going. I, I thought I was the only one that felt that way. Like Moneybag Yo was going, and I was like, "Oh, is Moneybag Yo about to be the the illest person on a track with J Cole on it?" And then he just stopped, so, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, that was weird. I didn't like the way that that felt." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was all set. I was like, "Yeah." Even when when I heard Cole's verse, I was kind of like, "All right," you kind of just like kind of yeah. felt like he was just going with the theme. Yeah, it's like you're, he wasn't Cole, and he was just, he wasn't. He wasn't skating on the beat. He was riding the beat. That's go. what some people tend to do. And it was like, J. Cole usually skates on the beat. And it was like, that time he was riding it. I like it. And I was like, eh, okay. Some WD-40. It's crazy <laughs> over here. It's like a scary movie door. It's crazy. All right, so we done with digging in the crates. Oh, whoa, hip-hop history, bro. Oh, you hip -hop got some hip-hop history? history? I do. All right. Today's the 19-year anniversary of 50 Cent's debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying. Man. 19 years. That sounds 2003. Crazy. I was a sophomore in high school. Yeah, I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. I was out of high <laughs> school. He was though. patiently waiting for a track to explode. I was definitely out of high school. You was a wankster? Um, I, I I was three, four years out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was fully invested in some nonsense. So there's a, a fact about this album that I thought was like a pretty dope fact that needs to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. Ever since Get Rich or Die Trying has come out, no album has sold more records than Get Rich or Die Trying. Really? Yeah. Since it's come out. Like, so since 2003, no album has sold more than Get Rich or Die Trying. Oh, so not from like when it came out. You're talking about like collectively since, over the 19 since. years? Yeah. Wow. That's that means no Adele, not Beyonce, not Hove, not Wayne, not like 
Taylor Swift, like none of these people are what you about doing. That's kind of crazy. It's the power universe. <laughs> I think the album um when Diamond, I, I can't remember. I, I think mean, it, at this point you would think that it has. I know at bare minimum, I remember when it oh, went you mean eight times release. platinum. Got you. Yeah, I remember it went eight times platinum. I don't know if it made it to ten times it went diamond. Yeah. But I know for a fact it went eight, but after all this time, mm-hmm. I feel like it's had to. Was that the debut of his acting career too? I mean, the movie came out shortly after. That's what I'm saying. Was that his first movie? Yeah. Before you like lost all that weight because that movie that nobody saw. No, nah, that movie was uh, it was it wasn't bad. Bad. Nobody saw that movie. Where did you see I it? On BT. I what? That's <laughs> <laughs> BT. It was after. It was after Baby Boy. Yeah, I can't even remember where I watched it at, but I definitely watched it. Was it um All Things Fall Apart? Is that what it's called? Yeah, <laughs> you got the name me. of the movie. All Things Fall Apart. Who else is in it? Oh, come on, man! Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but so, like, like I think we talked about before, like with Nas and stuff like that, about like greatest debut albums, like of all time. Mm-hmm. I think this has to be on the Mount Rushmore of it. Like I mean, the you album, could, you couldn't disagree. The they album is for themselves. The album is almost flawless. Like even today, like I, um, when the when it came out on Saturday, that it was the anniversary. Like I listened to it all the way through, and I was like, I let my watch talk for me. My cat talk for me. My wait for me. What up, homie? And I was like, yeah, it's still goes. I'm sure I've said this before, but there's just some albums when you listen to the songs on them, you know exactly where you were at that time. A weird thing about it, though, because like I've had this weird thing of uh, just in, it's mostly in sports, but it happens like in music too. Mm-hmm. It's just revisionist history, and it's like the way things are remembered than what it actually was. Okay. And I think if you were to ask somebody what was the biggest song that came from this album, mm-hmm. especially the younger kids, mm-hmm. they'd be like, oh, Mini Men. Like, that was the biggest song. Like, Mini Men, like, that song has, like, it stood the test of time. Mm-hmm. But if all of us that were there know, In the Club was a mega hit. Like, it was mm-hmm. insane. You couldn't go anywhere without hearing that. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, you can- <laughs> That's probably one of the like top three songs on the album that's probably carried it through the 19 years. But like many men, it's probably outlasted it and it probably became men, the best song. Many men was definitely thorough. I know several different places I was at when many men came. <laughs> For real. They probably they probably that probably was a sign to start clearing out. You know, you know a song is fire when it has an intro and they play the intro in the club. Mm. When they do the oh, come on, come on, pop, pop, pull off, pull off. <laughs> and they play, and everybody in the club's got they drink like yo, pull off, pull off. Do the same thing. Like, yeah. That's how you know your joint is like yo, it's flames. So terrible. You got the body had Wankster yep. yeah, in the club. Yeah. P I M P, many men, and twenty one questions like all on the same album. <sighs> I don't care, Lena. Whenever I hear it, I just want to chill and twist the lot. Can't stop to my 745. Like that Nate Duck. Girl. Still, still working, on, to love still me working now. on that 50 voice, huh? I mean, my 50 minutes. My 50 said, that shit glove, man. What you talking about? <laughs> just, I ain't talking fast. You just listening slow. <laughs> Come on. Did it recover? Did it recover? Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Two shakies and you're out. <laughs> That's not ours. That's not ours. That's not ours. All right. So insomnia hour. Hey. Wake me up inside. <laughs> Wake me up inside. Save me. I love it. Save me from it goes all the, the way all the time. We don't own the copyrights to that either. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it. You're not coming for us, man. I'm telling you. All right. So I finished Jack Reacher or Reacher. Okay. It's on my it's on my docket, bro. Like I'm like I'm I'm slicing through these shows now, but it's it's next up after um I'm banging out this one, then Ozark, and then I'm on a reacher. But you just like you be watching shows while you're driving, bro. Like you're bucked out. What are you talking about? <laughs> like you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, don't be true. <laughs> yeah, if y'all drive by me at night and you see a light coming from the car, all right, just keep your distance. Yeah, so you do not care about people's safety. <laughs> nah, <laughs> the people I mean, inside I mean, the car. I drive better. Distracted and some people fully attentive. <laughs> nah, but I don't be like watching the TV. It's like, you know how you have those episodes that are like burner episodes. So it's like, I'm not about to sit spend here. Anime fans call them filler. There you go. So it's just like, go ahead and do your talking. That way I know I'm caught up. That way when I do sit down, I can get to what I really want to watch. But um, I enjoyed the show. Um, it's definitely a show that you have seen before where okay. something happens, the person gets upset. They're going to avenge the reason why they're upset. And there's so many different ways to go through it to make sure that they find out the truth in the situation. So it's a revenge show. 
kind of. Like I said, I know it's supposed to be closer to the book. So, like, yeah, revenge I, I've heard a lot of positive things about the dude who plays Jack Reacher. So, I was pleasantly impressed because, you know, like, the last couple of movies he was in was the TV show and the movie. <laughs> You're just saying things. No, no, he was he in was Blue, Blue Mountain. Mountain. And Wasn't then he was the also, TV show as well? He was also a uh, hawk in the show Titans. There you go. So and that, he's done a lot he, of, like, He always plays, work. like, a doofy type person and, like, or yeah. he plays the muscle. He plays right. like a meathead. And there was none of that at all in this. Like he like he showed his intellectual capability to be like a strong actor and step out and say, I'm not going to get typecast. You know how I like to see, see that a lot from actors because I feel like we lose out on viewership when you just say, all right, you're just going to do this for the rest of your career. It's like, all right, I'm tired of watching this all the time. So I know my favorite author said that he looks like a handsome mountain. And I was like, it's hard to disagree with that. I was like, he does. <laughs> I know. You know, he some, plays the somebody, he, Raphael, the Ninja Turtle in the Michael Bay movies. No, nah, I did not know that. Yeah, you have to hear some of the I stories about it. Because, like, apparently the stories about that movie are crazy. Especially, like, the way the turtles themselves were treated. Like, that's why, like, a lot of them didn't come back. And, like, why the movie is so awful. Wow. Like, he goes off. And, like, he's just it's like, yo, like, that's the first Michael sucked. Bay incident, though. Come on, man. Like, we know that. It's crazy. It's also not the first Michael Bay movie to be awful. So, like, there's that, too. True that. I don't think it'd be bad, boys. Moving on from Reacher, we have Raising Dion, season two. Yep. That I am not going to watch. Because I got left out of the loop. Your so, kids dropped So, it? I go upstairs, and wifey is on, like, the last, the second, the last episode. I'm like, what are you watching? Dion looks like he's like 17. <laughs> I'm like, Ultimate I'm like, I'm like yo, what, yo, what's going on? So I'm not mad about that. She's like, oh, I'm catching up on Raising Dion so I could watch the last episode with Nias. I was like, wait, wait, what? Nias comes walking. I'm like, yo, Nias, you watched Raising Dion already? He was like, that I watched that like three days ago. I was like, yeah, we were supposed to watch this together. He was like, you didn't tell me. You came from my balls. <laughs> you came from my balls. <laughs> like, oh my God. That brother is such, your room. <laughs> such his father's son, man. Like This man was like, oh, Raising Dion's on? He like he literally she said he burned through the episodes in a day and a half. It was a weekend or something. He was just like, all right, Saturday and Sunday, this is what I'm doing. Disrespectful. And now he mind you, that's why he walked in the room because he walked in, was like, Mom, what episode are you on? And I'm like, what do you mean? What episode is she on? Mind you, I'm queuing up episode one. And I was just like, Nope, don't want to do it anymore. So I would have took the radiator out of his room. Yeah, I was like, it's, yeah, it's, I'm it's, it's off the docket. I'm not doing it. I'm done, I'm not doing wow. it. I'm all set. So moving on from Raising Dion, I'm heartbroken. R.I.P. Raising Dion. Heartbroken. <laughs> um, there's a new show on Netflix. Yeah, why you throw that Stickers rap for like that? Because I was mad. Like you were destroying I evidence. Was mad. Like, I wanted to. No, I thought you were trying to hide from me that you had a Stickers and didn't share it, bro. Some of that. Oh no, no, no. That, that was, was hella disrespectful. That was an ice cream bar too. Mm. Wow. You want to talk about betrayal? Runs in the family. I get it. Mm. Hey, you know. Third my... show on the docket. <laughs> We have <laughs> we have Murderville. I don't know if you heard of this show. I have heard of this show, and I was going to bring it up at one point in time. Don't tell me you've already watched it. I watched the first two episodes. I had to because Marshawn Lynch is in one of the episodes. That's one of the reasons I why had, I wanted to bring it up. I had to watch it in order to get to Marshawn Lynch, and he is fortunately the second episode. So the first one is Conan, and the second one is Marshawn. So what Murderville is, is um, a TV show about a cop who's like, uh, it's, it's a comedy. It's kind of like, almost like- He's a homicide detective. He's a homicide detective, but it's almost like sketch comedy. So it's, it's pretty hilarious. It, you could tell like there's a couple of times where they might have broken script, but they stay on task. Well, so the, the actual hook of the show is it's a real show, but the guest stars that come on don't know don't, what, the, what exactly. the script is. And so they have to try to guess who, like, who the killer is or what happened in the murder scene. But they're still also they're still also playing their character on the show. So the first episode he had Conan O'Brien. So every episode, what happens is, like ironically, like in movies, he gets a new partner, and then the person comes walking in with this detective trainee vest on, and they have to be his partner for the the TV episode. And it's like mad funny stuff happening. So the first episode was Conan. Second episode was Marshawn Lynch. I haven't gotten any further than that. Okay. But don't be surprised if the rest of those episodes are gone tonight. <laughs> next show. Oh. Uh, no, that's okay, because the, the <laughs> next the next category that we're on, I'm leaving you with the dust anyways, because you don't watch no movies. So, like, that's all there is Oh, okay, that. okay, so, okay. Like, TV, I guess, is your bag. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, okay. hey, it's Omni Hour. I'm be up watching something. All right, so um, the season finale of of uh ghost book 
two with Tyreek. Power book the power two. universe. Yeah, there you go. With with Tariq. Um I, I can't I can't lie to you. I was a little skeptical about how the second season was gonna go. Well, I know people loved the and episode then, before, the penultimate episode. So out of nowhere, that joint picked up and it went super crazy. And at at like I was locked in. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Like it got it got real. And I was like, okay, this show is enjoyable, especially the dinner table scene where where Shorty <laughs> went ham on the whole family and that ain't show. Dinner table. I'm, like, I'm gonna kill you. It's like that should that's still your daughter, Mary. But no, it, um, and then 50 is definitely wilding. Because the same day that Tyreek ended, the very next day, Tommy was on TV. So that episode has already come out for the Tommy show? Yes. Force? I want to say it's Force. Okay. Book four? <laughs> I don't know. It's one of them books. But I know... Um, 50 can't even read. And he's making all these right, books. Right, right. And it's like... Man, I can't read all this stuff, so like, make the pictures move for me. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> it. Stop it. Does a laugh get you at all? So, no. <laughs> so... The, the episode did start off a little sh- slow, and I was like, yeah, I'm really not going to get into this one. But then it kind of, like, got into his little Tommy mode, like, mid to the end of the episode. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a couple more episodes and see what happens. So okay. I'm, I'm in I'm in for so it. So it's on the up and up. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. All right, I guess we will see. And like I said, like, I'm all set with the power universe. I try not to. <laughs> I know. You were like, it's just too much to keep up with. Um, I just did like after the the power finale when it got dude. broken up, I was like, I don't care about this show anymore. Like this show like stopped being good like a lot of time ago. Like I was all set. Hey, you never know, man. I heard Councilman Tate is still around. Councilman Tate is definitely still around. <laughs> hey, listen, man, he's he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. He's tripping, but he's doing his thing. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, I'm super excited about this one. Because the homie caught up on a show. Finally polished off a show. Yes. That was me polished. Yes, there you go. <laughs> he he take his time with it. He was he got right through it, which lets me know that he was super intrigued. So there is gonna be some back and forth as we talk about your uh honor. Your honor. We'll start there as an appetizer. Okay. Let me know what you think. Okay, so I watched Your Honor. Mm-hmm. So for those who don't know, Your Honor is a Brian Cranston show that's on Showtime. Um, he plays a judge who his son um, kills somebody in a hit-and-run accident, and then he covers it up. So then it's kind of like the unraveling of all those events. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 10 episodes, about an hour each episode. And I thought the premise was really interesting. I thought the acting in it was pretty good. But like it kind of was, it dragged me. Like I was like, it was it was a chore to watch it towards the end. That finale though, still, I was oh! like, even the finale, I was like, I kind of like, Shots. I watched it and like immediately after the episode ended, I was like, don't what know if I'm watching season two. <laughs> oh, I was like, no, I was like, oh man, that's crazy. Don't well, know if I'm watching season well, two. That's why we called it the appetizer because this full course meal we about to talk about. Wait, we want to talk about the show that I have not finished yet. Yes. No, all right, go, go ahead. We can talk and about that's it. that Mayors of Kingstown. Because I know you started it. I did start it. I'm on episode eight. Oh, um, you only got a couple left. As I said, I got two episodes. That's yeah. It. Yeah, the, the penultimate and then the finale, which yes. is the two most important episodes. Yes. Um, I would say, so for those who don't watch Mayor of Kingstown, even though mm-hmm. we talked about it a whole bunch of times, it is a show starring Jeremy Renner, mm-hmm. where he plays uh, the brother of the actual mayor, but they call him the mayor because he pretty much keeps the streets clean from all the deals that he makes, not only with the gangs on the streets, but uh, more importantly, inside the penitentiary, the prison. Like, he kind of makes a lot of deals. Explain that so much better than I did. I do everything better than you. <laughs> wow! You look lighter than me, boy. Wow! <laughs> I can't help it. Um, but yeah, but like more importantly, inside the prison. Are you really much like that? That was for that reread joke. I'm just throwing that out. Oh that just still hurts. <laughs> like, like, um, much God. I think of all the shows that you recommended, this is easily the best one. Mm, okay. I'm a hundred, like a complete opposite, like 180 of of your honor where it's like your honor like i felt i was like oh i guess i could watch an episode before i go to bed mm-hmm. like i look at the time when i'm done with a, a mirror of kingstown episode and i'm like i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, 
There was, a, there was a night I was like, well, maybe I could just put it on my phone and watch it before I go to sleep. And I was like, I'm doing too much. Oh. And I was just like, hey, let me, I was like, I'll come in, I'll watch it, whatever. And it was like, I'm already planning my finale meal. It's not like that. Like, <laughs> That's like, how like, I got to watch where I'm at with it. I was like, yeah, I was, I'm about to give me some wings over it. I was about to bang out this finale. I really, really enjoy it. That's what's up. I think the, That's what's up. I do think that the acting probably isn't as good as Your Honor. It's a lot of new, lot of new faces. Yeah, but it's like I enjoy everyone's role. Mm-hmm. Like, who do you think my favorite character on this show is? Just real quick. The gang, the gang member, the lead gang member. There's a lot of lead gang members. There's a white no, gang, there's a Latin gang, there's no, a black the, gang. The, the black gang. You damn right. I don't know what his name is, but that dude is perfect. I don't, I don't know what he's in. I need him in more stuff. Yeah, like big he, man just sits on his front lawn selling crack. He's right. the and he's got mad range because, like, he has the, the the comedic conversations, and he has the serious conversations, then he has the sarcastic conversations, then he has like those real gritty "I might kill you right here, right now" conversations. There's a lot like, of times where every episode is like, "Oh, somebody's about to die in a second. Like, right. He's about to go down on this front lawn with yeah. his folding chairs out here, and this one cooler that everybody keeps grabbing stuff." <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's bugged out in this one. Yeah, yes, that's what I told you. I was like, if Hawkeye was like he wasn't mayor of Kingstown, he can't be like that. I'm of course. Not. I know, I know, I get it. Because then Hawkeye would be good. Hawkeye was still, uh, I mean, he's still good. But yeah. anyways, hey, there you go. But yeah, that's all I had for Insomnia TV. I was super hyped that you had, you, like, you delved into Mayor of Kingstown. Got a couple episodes left. We're gonna have to touch base after you watch the finale, because I yeah, I'm, don't be surprised if it's done by tomorrow. Yeah, like, because I don't know what time we're gonna be done here. Hit, so I'm hit probably gonna me up. Back. Hit me up because I'm anxious <laughs> to see how you feel about the, excuse me, about the last episode. Okay, all, all right. right, I'm gonna let you know. All right, so we're going to get into that popcorn poppy. Don't stop. Pop that, pop that. That's... I, I, I like that. <laughs> hey, poppy. <laughs> they don't understand. No yeah. love, I understand. Were you waiting for that? I was. Don't no, I was waiting. I was waiting. Yeah, this man is I was like, I'm about to do a new intro yeah. and see how he feels about this it. This man went full shoulders and <laughs> elbows. <Yeah. laughs> this man opened up his chest plate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yo, that is hilarious. All right, you got some movies to talk about finally. Is the new intro better? Do you like that one better than the Ranky one? You do everything. Uh, so which one is better? <laughs> Nah, yeah, you might have to mix her up. <laughs> I don't know. That energy got there, then you mixed it back in. I don't know. No. You'll figure it out. I mean, look, That's I what mean, you do. It's all trial and error. <laughs> I mean, you guys can talk in the comments and tell me which one you like better, and I can watch Call Go. Right. We're looking for an A one day one. We're looking for an A one day one. There's, got, there's a couple. There's two got, people with bad. We got a few competitors right now. We, we're gonna save that though. We're gonna save. I it. think one of them needs our money though. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Finally, yeah, the dry. Oh, <laughs> you always drinking, bro. I'd be over here like dry mouth, and you'd be over there swimming. Stay hydrated, home. man. You want water? <laughs> you want water? That drink has man. bubbles in it, bro. That Come drink on, man. Me- this is still, it's not. It's uncracked. You good? No, that drink is All warm. Right. I'm just saying, man. I'm out here. Look at look at the, all the bubbles and the heat <laughs> bubbles. I'm about about bubbles, man. It's um, so after the bit of a dry spell, I I did not watch the three five five. Like I made Good it. Job. I made it to this point Good of not job. watching the three five. Um, we did have two movies come out uh, okay. this past weekend. Um, and they're very different uh types of movies. So okay. like it's kind of like a, a toss up. Uh, the first movie was Jackass Forever. Okay. Um, it's weird because like I feel like I'm like, do I need to explain Jackass to was people? It the same thing just with O guys. Yeah, but it was like all right. So. For those who don't know what Jackass is, it was a early 2000s TV show where a bunch of guys were just doing stunts. Mm-hmm. Like, in they call themselves stuntmen, and it's like, I don't think they're stuntmen. Yeah. I think you guys just do mess up stuff to each other. Yeah. Um, Started with like, Steve-O, Johnny Knoxville, and Bam Mangieri. Margera. There you go. Ryan Dunn. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Pontius, like those were like the main crew, mm-hmm. and then like they've done four movies. They the show had like six, seven seasons. Um, a lot of people hurt themselves trying to replicate what they're doing on the show. <laughs> oh, the, the jackass warning in the beginning of right. like, do not try these friends was was famous. Um, if you enjoy the jackass show or the jackass movies, I think you will also enjoy this movie. I feel like I got exactly what I wanted from it. It was better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And what's called? I felt like everybody in the theater was laughing, and then like. And I think they have a religious following to where they're going to get their numbers up. Yeah, and then like when they do the gross stuff, mm-hmm. like everybody does, like, ah, oh. mm-hmm. and then like you know what I'm saying. Um, when when the funny stuff happens, everybody was. I was like, yo, I was like, they're killing it. Um, they've kind of figured out. They really, really figured out the formula. So they, this one also introduces 
a bunch of uh, new jackasses. That's what they call them. They're like they're the new recruits, um, oh, okay. stuff like that. So like we like how do we talk about this? And I talk about Wee Man. Like he's one of the biggest. Yeah. Like, Wee Man and Preston, but like they got like these new guys, and there's this new. Did somebody pass away? Ryan Dunn passed away. Got yeah. you, got you. Um, but they have a new Preston. Preston was always like the he's the fat guy. So they make him mm-hmm. do all the fat guy stuff. Mm-hmm. He's always wearing tighty whiteies and like doing mm-hmm. all this other stuff. Oh, yeah. So they got I remember when he was chasing Wee Man through like the yeah. park. Come here, come here. Like, hey, yeah. <laughs> that's what, see that that feeling right there? You watch that guy. That's exactly how you're feeling. Like, yo, they like these guys, like they're your idiot friends from college. Like, yeah. yo, they do dumb stuff. Yeah. And it's like there very rarely was there a point where I was like, oh, this stunt is dumb or this is corny or this is not funny. Like everything, like I was like, because they tell you like this is Jackass and this is da, 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 this is what we're gonna do. Mm-hmm. And it's like you hear them say what they're gonna do, and you're just like, oh my God, like how is this gonna and then like it always ends up being to get a kid to eat a snail one time. <laughs> do you want to hear the story? <laughs> yeah, you're intrigued, right? Proceed. <laughs> it's like when the movies first came out, I was working a temp job at Lego. You okay. know what I mean? So it was all types of people coming in and out and we were talking about the movie and I was like yeah them brothers is wilding on that show and one of the kids was like I think I could make it on that show I was like everybody says that until they're actually having to do some of this stuff and they're not built for it he's like no nah, I was built for it and ironically there was this random snail on the floor you <laughs> have any idea how rare it is that I've seen a snail the fact that we yeah, go bro that joint was like a full grown snail I've like, never seen one that's like, like that it was so big like you can see his little antennas like I've never seen antennas on a, on a snail so somebody comes out was like oh that's the Disgusting. I don't know if you knew this, like you like people pour salt on snails. Yeah, to kill them. Yeah, and kill them and it shrinks them up. So somebody came out and poured salt on it and that joint shrunk up. And I was like, I bet you won't eat that snail. He was like, Yeah, I would, but I'm not gonna do it for free. I was like, I got 10 bucks. <laughs> you went higher than me because my first thing would have been like half five. Yeah. Somebody else was like, I'll throw five in. That kid was like, it fell out of his hand. He picked it back up, threw it in his mouth. I was like, that's ten dollars I ever spent. <laughs> I was because I was like, oh, nasty listen, nigga. Listen, I got to move in, nigga. Thirty-five minutes later into this shift, this man's on his forklift, looking like he was seeing purple stars and green mountains, pink elephants. That man was on the forklift, turning the circle. I don't know if you ever driven a forklift yes. before. This man's turning the circle, but the forklift's not on. I'm like, yo, fam, get off the forklift. Yeah. <laughs> we never saw him again. That man's dead, bro. <laughs> like, uh, I, I hope not. I hope not. I hope you see this one day. You put in the comments like that snail was definitely <laughs> still here, bro. Me. Like, right. like, snail almost killed me. But I'm yeah, also married man. and have three kids. Like you know, living a great life. <laughs> My favorite deal is is, is stuffed snail. <laughs> oh, that's that's hard go. That's what it's called. Hey, is it really? Yeah, that's hard go. It's like snail. Learn something today. Um. So what should we call it? I think talking about jackass, like I feel like I'd ruin it if I told you some of the stunts and stuff that they do. Cause like that's like the whole point is the shock factor of seeing them do the things. Yeah. So like being like, oh, this was great and stuff like that. So like I don't I mean, want just the to... trailer alone, they show some crazy stuff on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, they, they showed the like, bear that looked crazy. It was pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. And then like, you know, and then like you watch it with your friends or you watch it with whoever you watch with, and then you go over and be like, Did you do that? No. Could they how much could they pay to get you to do that? Like, that's what this whole movie and show is based off of. Nope. Um, so, like, on the, on the new crew, like I said, they got the fat guy. They got a black guy. They got a, a girl. And then they have, like, um, like another white guy. Or, no, it's like they got two black guys because they're diversity. I, that guy, I, was just about, I thought you were going to be like, yeah. they got an Asian guy. I was like, like, oh, they're hitting they're everywhere. Because huh? all the white guys, they look, they look bad, bro. Like, they look yeah. like... Like Steve O, like he went through Definitely some stuff. Taking the toll. I will say this, and I will put a little disclaimer, a little bit of warning. It's a lot of dick stuff in this movie. There's a lot of, and it's like it's always the older guys. All the older guys are like, I don't want to say what they're doing, but like there's quite a bit of peen when you watch this movie. Oh no. Um. So like to kind of like keep it moving. Um. If I was to rate it on the nasty scale, which is full price matinee, five dollar Tuesday, uh, red box, or catch it on streaming or miss it. I'd probably put it on the matinee. Like I thought it was pretty good. And it's like, it, I feel like you're getting exactly what you go in there for. And I think it was better than expected. I'm glad they got a new crew. These guys have to be like, what, 50? They are 50. Sheesh. Like, the, and they talk about their injuries like quite a bit. Like Johnny Knoxville. But what age do you stop peeing on your friends for fun? Like there's one, there's <laughs> one, there's one guy in the squad, the one that uh the did the, the bear, the bear thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how much he's getting paid, mm-hmm. but he did a lot of this, like because like you know, they break it up. Like, this mm-hmm. is a Johnny Knoxville stuff, this right. is a Steve O thing. Mm-hmm. He did like 
quite a bit. And a lot of his stuff was like shots to the nuts. Cause like, you remember one of the famous jackass things is the cup test yeah. where it's like, and like they take it to like the next level. And like, he did all that. I was like, yo bro, you don't want to tap out right. like at any point in time. I was like, I don't know how his check got three kids. I'm all set. <laughs> he, yeah. His kids ain't whatever kids he's having now. They ain't going very far. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But like jackass, I think you should check it out. Um, the second movie that I watched was Moonfall. What is that? Moonfall is a movie that is starring Patrick Wilson, who you might know. Patrick Wilson. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna get there. I, I, I call him Dollar General Chris um Chris Pratt. Do you know who Chris Pratt is? From Guardians of the Galaxy. Star Lord. Okay. All right. So I call this dude uh Dollar General Chris Pratt, but he is the the dude from Insidious, the dad. Never watched it. He is the dad from the or the guy from the conjuring. Never watched it. He is uh Aquaman's brother and Aquaman. Never watched. It. <laughs> oh, bro, let's check it out. The thing is, like, he's yeah. in mad stuff. Like, he's like, God, you want to look him up? Yeah, what you say his name was Patrick Wilson. Okay, it stars Continue. Patrick Patrick Wilson, Holly Berry, and uh, our boy Sam Tarley from Game of Thrones. Is that Holly is, Berry's in it. Yep. You look at that. Oh, up. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. white man, because that's pretty much what he plays. Yeah. Like, isn't this the same guy from? I don't know. Come on, man. You got to spit it out because I was like, you're, you're, you're killing time. No, I thought he was the guy in Murderville. No, that's Will Arnett. Okay. Man, okay. you're nice with the names. <laughs> nope. um, but what you call it? Uh, Holly Berry and, like I said, Sam Tarley from what you call it? From Game of Thrones. Sam for Jon Snow's best friend, the fat one. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, how, yeah, yeah. See how they do fat people? They ought to be that fat guy for you to go through <laughs> all I'm talking about. You get it. Yeah, but like you needed it. That's the point. <laughs> Michael Pena is also in this movie. A Puerto Rican guy from End of Watch. End of Watch. The cop movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, man. They were digging in the crate with that one. End of Watch is that was a good. movie. That's a fire that movie, bro. Movie. I was gonna say he's the. I was just gonna keep going with Puerto Rican guy from this. Puerto Rican guy from this. Because he's also a Puerto Rican guy from Ant Man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. right. And he was also in another movie. He was like, you trying to kill to me, bro? Yeah, exactly. Nobody can kill to me, bro. <laughs> yes, I wish I knew what that was. Like, I'm a pimp. I'm a pimp. My mama said I'm a pimp. <laughs> but yes, Michael Pena is also in this movie. Um, it is a disaster movie um, mm-hmm. made by the master of all um, disaster movies, Roland Emmerich, who is known for directing Independence Day 2021, The Day After Tomorrow. Wow. This is what he does. He does the, what you call it, disaster movies. Um I don't want to get too, too crazy into the plot of this movie because, like, it does, like, it bogs itself down, like, at one point in time, like, explaining, like, what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. Um, The short version of this is the moon Mm -hmm. is out of its orbit. And because it's out of this orbit, it is now messing up everything. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything that's going on in the Earth. I've seen the previews. I didn't know that was Moonlight. Moonfall. Moonfall, sorry. No. Um, So... um, Sam Tarley is kind of like a like a podcaster, um, like guy, and like he winds up figuring out that the moon is moving from its orbit. He tries to warn NASA; they don't listen. Holly Berry and uh, Patrick Wilson are astronauts. Mm-hmm. They were in space and they saw something go to the moon to move it out of orbit. Nobody believes them. Uh, calamity ensues, and they have to send Sam Tarley. Uh, Patrick Wilson and Holly Berry to the moon to figure out what's going on because people are dying like crazy on this land. And, like I, the tides are moving. Sounds interesting. The tides are moving. Like all this other stuff. Like everything's going on. This is it is in the movies. Yes, it's in the theaters. I, I saw both of these movies in the theaters. Come uh-huh. on now, stop playing with your boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now. You could watch this movie on there because it was not that great of a movie. Oh, word? It's the, it's oh, like, you made it sound so exciting. So that, that's the thing is like, it is a good, bad movie. Because oh, it's like, it's God. not that good of a movie, right. but it's entertaining the stuff that's happening. How long is it? It's you know, it's long, bro. It's like two hours nope. and four minutes or something nope. like that. Dune got me once. You ain't gonna Dune me But again. it's like, Dune is serious. Like, I feel like I don't know how serious this movie is. First of all, we gotta stop. Period. Like, yo, is Holly Berry getting finer, bro? Like yo, this that whole movie, I was like, good lord! I'm like, Holly Berry looks. Well, she's also in the commercials too with uh, um, 
the Caesar commercials. Oh, with JB Smooth. With JB Smooth. Looking like Cleopatra. Smooth. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just like, good lord. I'm like, Holly Bear, whatever you figured out, like, it, like I feel like you look better than I remember you looking back in the day. Uh-huh. Holly Bear was fine back in the day. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, maybe oh, this is my. your re-re replacement. Look, I'm getting sick and tired. Of <laughs> Listen, you ain't the only one. Drake unfollowed both. Of them. <laughs> Everybody salty. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> So, <laughs> so like I, like as I was saying, like Moonfall is entertaining with the stuff that's going on. The, the problem uh, with Moonfall is when they're not doing the astronaut stuff, like when it's not uh, Sam Tarly, Patrick Wilson, Halle Berry, and they're focusing on the B plot because that's what happens in Roland Emmerich movies. Is he has to have like a family that's like going through stuff, like in twenty uh, twenty one, like the the family's like in the car is like there's earthquakes and they're like what. Like, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of that stuff in this movie with like Patrick Wilson's son, mm-hmm. Holly Berry's son, mm-hmm. and like all this other stuff. And it's like every time that they go to them, like I don't care what's going on with them, even gotcha. though they're dealing with all the crazy stuff that's happening on the earth. And it's like visually it looks crazy, like because it's like there's points where the moon gets closer and because it gets cro- closer, like gravity shifts. So like dudes are like driving and all of a sudden like their cars are going oh, up. No. And it's not like that. Like it's a lot of wild blood stuff going on. But it's like it's completely you make it sound interesting. You have to turn your brain off because, like, a lot of this stuff just does not make sense. Because you're like, if this happened, like, no one would be alive. And then, like, you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. So, like, you have to turn that part of your brain off and be like, this isn't real. This couldn't happen because that's not the point. It's a popcorn flick. It's supposed to be, like, you know, dumb action and all this other stuff. Gotcha. But anything that I feel like, I feel like, first of all, Sam Tarly steals this movie. I think he's the best character in the entire movie. Remind me again. Sam Tarly, Sam. From oh, Game gotcha. of Thrones. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. He's the best. He's like the best. He's the best character in the movie. He has like the. He's the funniest. He has what you call it? Like his real sincere moves. <laughs> like you, Sam Charlie, Sam. <laughs> yeah, but you got it though, right? You're my best friend, Sam. <laughs> I couldn't do this without you, Sam. I don't want it. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, if I was to put it on a nasty scale, I guess I'd put it. Ugh, it's a rough spot. I think I'd put it at like it's between the. Five dollar Tuesday in the red box, and I think I'll lean, <laughs> I'll lean towards the five dollar Tuesday because like I spent my money and I wasn't mad about it, but like it was just like I was like oh, that was cool and all, but I was like, <laughs> if if I thought it was gonna be something better than it was, I'd be pretty pissed off. <laughs> but it's yeah, like I sure. think I honestly think uh, if it was a Netflix movie, like people would have really liked it. <laughs> but the fact that you have to take it serious is kind of uh, it's kind of rough. Okay. All right. Popcorn poppy, baby. There you go. I'm, ha- I'm happy you back. I'm happy you back. You Don't looking- stop. Pop that, pop that. <laughs> you was looking a little down there for a couple weeks, man. No, like, I'm telling you. There's I, nothing to watch. I was going on a Cinemark app, and I was like, 355. I, just, I, was about to say, I just knew you was going to show up and be like, I watched the 355. <laughs> like, I'll tell you. I was like, and, like, and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That'd have been crazy. And I was like, yo, actually, movie of the year. <laughs> Strangely, though, because like so many movies haven't been coming out. Like, Jackass is probably like the best movie that I've seen this year. Really? Yeah, because you think Spider-Man and like all that stuff was before the year started. Facts. Maybe Don't Look Up. Like probably. I think Jackass is better than Don't Look Up. Yeah, I'll take comedy over some stuff most times. Okay. okay but I mean all we right. could cross it on over to the hardwood check-in. I like it. <laughs> So the NBA is going trade crazy, fire sell, barn burning. Did you just offer me some biscuits for this player? And I deal done. Love it. <laughs> I don't because the is Knicks like, have not moved Julius <laughs> Randle. It's coming. It's Get coming. pumpkin up out of there, man. I've heard, I've heard some stuff. I think, here, I think something's coming. Right now, I'm here. Mitchell Robinson may not want to sign a long term contract with the Knicks. They don't even look like they want Mitchell Robinson to sign a long term contract. All right, so I'm I'm hoping that something happens soon, but. Um, we'll start with the first trade, which was uh, Karis LeVert. Yep, Karis Traded LeVert. to Cleveland. Cleveland. Cavaliers. Uh, Cavaliers wind up getting Karis LeVert at a second round pick. Uh, they wind up sending over Ricky Rubio, a lot of reprotected first rounder, and two second rounders for him. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you hear that, so, like, clearly, it seems like not a lot to get back for uh, Karis just, LeVert. It just sucks that he's become the ultimate trade piece for people to try to get stuff now. Because it's like, he's been hurt. 
And it's like, you know, you can't really control that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, he is a bucket. Like He is definitely a bucket. He's definitely like a this younger J.R. Smith. Third team or fourth team? Oof. I want to say third. Was he with the started with the Nets or was he with somebody before the Nets? The Nets drafted him. Oh, okay. So, yes, yeah, it's 13. Yeah, 13. 13 in two years, though. Yeah. Sheesh. But he's been he's been hurt for a large portion of like those these past two years. Yeah. So like you can't put a lot of that on him. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's exactly what the Cavaliers needed. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like he is a bucket, but it's like I feel like that's not a hundred percent what the Cavaliers were looking for. Like I know, like there was a lot of rumors that uh, Eric Gordon of the Rockets was on their radar, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, that dude makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you just got a sniper that comes off the bench. I still feel like the Pacers got over that lottery. Oh, but they're protected. Yeah, so if the pick lands in the lottery, they don't they get don't it. They don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. Which, if the Cavaliers keep going on the route they're going, they're not going to be a lottery team anyways. Like, they're a top four team in the East right now. Right. And it's like, as long as you make the play-in game, you're not a lottery team. Right. So, like, I think I think they'll be all right. So, like, they're probably going to end up with this pick. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you end up with, like, the 17th pick, two first, two second-round picks of Ricky Rubio, whose contract's over at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So, like, you get $10 million in cap space. Because it looks like that's what they're doing. They're like, yo, we're clearing this team. Yeah, they have to. They have to. It's a, it's a long road from Paul George. A long <laughs> road from Paul George. Like, wow, all the people that, Paul George. Yeah, that meant when he left, he pulled the bottom left corner brick of the crib. It was like, see <laughs> where y'all are at in two years. How started leaning the foundation went crazy. But it's weird because, like, they rebuilt for a little bit, right? And it was like, you know, Miles Turner, Sabonis, uh, Brogdon, Jeremy Lamb, and, like, they made, like, a little playoff run. Yeah, but then they got figured out, and the team wasn't the same. Well, no, I take it back. You know who we are missing in that was the Oladipo piece. Oladipo was mm. the guy, and then he went and got mm. hurt. Yep. Missed a ton of time, then they had to trade and him. he's in Miami now? Yeah. How the mighty have fallen, right? <laughs> um, this next one, are you done with this one? I mean, I guess uh, the, my question was, like, who do you think won the trade? Um, I'm just going to say the Pacers. Because they're getting two picks, and Ricky Rubio is still, is, I think he's still in a good part of his career where he can make something happen. I don't disagree with you. And it's like, what, even if Karis LeVert is going off for 30 a game, the Pacers are still going to lose. But he's on the Cavs. I mean, no, I'm talking about when he was on the Cavs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to get some, shake something up. That's what you do when you're not good. You got to shake Like, you got to watch God. You got to move some stuff, and like, he did, he was making a pretty big chunk of change, and he wasn't really producing like that. I think he was only averaging like 12 points per game. Yeah. So, like, maybe with this new little bit featured role, like, he could take some of the ball handling duties from uh, Darius Garland. Mm-hmm. So, like, make that, like, a little bit easier. But I think the Cavaliers have another so high. I mean, it gives them a, a, a nice little three, little young three, because they still got Sexton, right? Yep, but he's hurt. I mean. I think he's out for the year. Yeah, everybody get healthy sooner or later. Yeah. So not like they're in that rush. None of these guys are old. So. I think that was the plan, though, is, like, get a guy who's young enough that he kind of fits with everybody else's mm-hmm. age. Like, he's kind of with the – the Jared, him and Jared Allen played together mm-hmm. on the Nets when they when they were with the, yeah. the D'Angelo Russell they team. They might mess around up. and look different once they get healthy. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I think okay. that this move is, like, this is going to kind of keep us afloat now, but it's really for next year, right. like what the next year's team looks like. Right. So like, I mean, but I do, I do got to say, I think the nah, Pacers kinda, run out. This kind of puts them, puts them like a year or two out because giving up them picks matters. Yeah. So. And sometimes they have to make it work with the draft that's coming up though. It's like, does it really matter? Mm, that's what. Right. That's what you're I'm right. saying. You're right. So like, but I do feel like the Pacers kind of won out because like I'm all about give me some picks, give me some cap space. Mm-hmm. And so, and that wasn't the only move that they made today, but we'll get to that in the next minute. But the next trade that happened was a little surprising that happened earlier this morning. I didn't agree with this one at all. Boy, CJ McCollum got yep. traded to the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. So the Pelicans wound up getting CJ McCollum, Larry Nance, and the shadow, Tony Snell. Mm-hmm. The Blazers ended up with Josh Hart, Thomas Sadaransky, Nickel Alexander Walker, uh, DD Lozanda, Who? and a first round pick and two second round picks. I think. Th- they basically traded CJ for some picks. What are y'all doing with Dame Lillard, man? Like, what did Dame Lillard? Dame Lillard did nothing but show loyalty. That's that part. He did nothing. He did nothing that but show part. loyalty. Say that he was down to the city. That part. He's here for the grind. And they were like, "Oh, you want to grind? You know, what we is. got some grind for you, boy." Or show me how, show me how really built you are. You know what that dude about to do, right? He about to unfollow the blade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how the new young dudes tell you that they mad. We're like, oh, oh, this what happening? But like the thing is, like Josh Hart's a he's a nice piece. Yes. But it's like 
He's getting up there, though. They've given up a lot of stuff. Like, in the past couple of days, like, they've given up Covington, Norman Powell, CJ McCollum, mm -hmm. Larry Nance, like, all these so guys. Would you rather have CJ or Josh? Josh Hart? You talk about, you talk about CJ McCollum or Josh Hart? Yes. Why are you asking stupid questions, bro? CJ McCollum is an actual name. CJ McCollum won them playoff games. There like, until, like, CJ McCollum, like, at one point in time, like, they were making 2K badges for his mid-range and right. stuff like that. So, like, for the Pelicans... It's like, yeah, like, give me that all day. It's like, what do these picks mean to us, even though they're trash? So, like... So, does this get Zion to stay? No. <laughs> if I'm Zion, I'd be like, oh, man, that's crazy. He said no. <laughs> <I'm still eating. laughs> you know, like, Zion yeah. to me probably look the same. I don't know. Like, Zion, you look great. Oh, wait, let me put my fat suit up. <laughs> Got to get up out of here. Sherman. But Sherman, I mean, Sherman, it, Sherman. it would be a nice three, though. I'm not saying it's not. It would be a nice three, but... I think that they fit really weirdly together. Like, Brandon Ingram, to me, is the weird piece in there. Mm -hmm. Like, because he's not a great facilitator. Like, he's really, like, just a scorer. Yeah. And, like, he's still their number one scorer. Like, C.J. McCollum's going to make some stuff happen. I like the idea of a Zion, C.J. pick and roll mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But it's like, I still just think Brandon Ingram's just a weird piece. Like, I don't know where he's supposed to go. But if he's your number one scoring option, like, it's and weird. I, and it's tough, too, because those the three of those guys don't really get a lot of assists. So even when you're saying the pick and roll, like I'm trying to picture CJ like really being a point guard that's facilitating an offense, and I don't see it. Well, they still have Devontae Graham, who actually is their point guard. True. And then Jonas Valanciunas. The team is weird, bro. It seems, it this is. team makes no sense. It is. And it's like they're. It makes sense to me why why they're at the bottom of the West because this team like makes no. Obviously, Zion's hurt. They look like the Toronto Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto's winning though. Like Toronto, like they have these weird pieces that Fool's get gold. they get dubs. It's fool's gold. Well, if you say so, who do you think won this trade? Is it obvious that you get the best player? In yes, the trade? definitely. Care about them picks. <laughs> I, I really just, I don't know what the Blazers are doing. Like, do you have any idea, like, when you see all this stuff, like, what's going on? No, I feel like they're repeatedly slapping Dame in the face. That's why I said that part. I, I just don't get it. This kid said he's going to stay with y'all long, long term and he's loyal to the soil and he wants you to build a team around him and then you continuously ship pieces out. So I don't know if there's something else that they have. In the, in the backlandish that nobody knows and they are going to make another blockbuster trade. But as far as I see it, Dame is out there by himself right now. Like, and I, I would also not be surprised if we see Yusef Nurkic get traded before the deadline. Mm -hmm. So the trade deadline that is would Thursday. Be crazy. Dude. I think he's, I think he's going, bro. I like, like, it seems to me like they're clearing contracts. They're clearing cap space. For what, though? That's the thing. Is like, I don't what? know what the Nobody next move is. Nobody wants to go to Portland. I'm also wondering if Dame is, because he's hurt right now, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if he's going to be like, Yo, I'm sitting out the year, and they want him to sit out the year, so that way these picks mean something, mm -hmm. and they just completely rebuild around him. Would you be surprised if, this is, a, if like, this is a Julius Randle landing? But that still doesn't help Dame. I'm all for it. I don't know what we're going to get from Jules unless y'all going to give me all them picks you just got, Josh Hart, and all these guys who will remain nameless because I don't feel like saying their names again. But The thing like, is, like, the only players that they've gotten in these trades that, like, I really, really like for the future of their team is Nickel Alexander-Walker. Mm -hmm. I like him. And then they already have Anthony Simons. And it's like, all you guys are doing is just getting more guards. Like, right. where are these bigs? Where are these wings? Right. Like, I think that they traded Nasir Little too, and I'm like, "What are you guys trading all of your wings and bigs?" And I like, I'm telling you, somebody's like, gonna get fired. And like, we've been talking about somebody's how how what you call it. You ever been in a Madden league and you have that one dude that's like <laughs> 0 and seven, yeah, and they just dump their whole team and then leave the league? That's yeah. what they're doing, man. Somebody about to get fired. And um, I told you, I think that what you call it. The I think my phone or NBA or whoever it is has been listening to me because every time I say something, it winds up coming up. Mm -hmm. I believe that you Yusef Nurkic is gone before the trade deadline on Thursday. I would definitely give up Jules for him. Julius Randle for Nurkic? Yes. You got a wild, like, you really just don't like, like, either your value of Julius Randle is super low or you just have a wild perception of how good their people are. No, I just, I feel like, like, once you start acting weird, just bounce. Just bounce. I don't care about the, the fact of how good you are, what you're valued. All right, buy low, sell high. Let's get them up out of here. It's like there's no reason to try to keep him around, play buddy buddy and all none of that extra stuff. Like, because like we got a good coach, we got some young pieces. Let's see what we can do. Like, I'm not about to be catering to somebody who don't want to be around. Bye. Bye. Tibbs is uh, already saying that he didn't. Don't want, start he the Tom Brady pick. bye thing again. No, like you did yesterday. You, you, you got me hot. I'm telling you, man. It's like <laughs> let's let's move on. Let's move on. Right, like, my what man, you got. My so man. the other uh 
piping hot breaking news trade that happened like mm-hmm. a little while ago. Dr. Sabonis, mm-hmm. the butch call it the all former, I should, should I say former all-star? Because uh, yeah, it was all-star like two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um Melo got picked as an all-star too, not to digress. I was gonna get there, man. Uh-huh. I was gonna talk about like how everybody's listening to what I'm saying because like clearly they let you talk. <laughs> Anyways, um all-star big man Dr. Sabonis of the Pacers as the fire sale continues. Uh he what you call it was shipped out earlier to the Sacramento Kings in oh, a, in a wild move, bro. Like, so like I have a lot of thoughts on I need to know. So the Pacers, uh I'm, hat. I'm gonna tell you who yes. they uh, go ahead. They sent out three people. Who do you want to take? They sent out. Oh, it's not De'Aaron Fox because he's going to the Knicks. It's not De'Aaron Fox. Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald did get moved in. It's crazy. Crazy. Look to hear the other guy in it. Um, it's not oh boy, the big man, right? Which big man? There's a lot of big men. Um Talk about Rashad Holmes? Yeah. It's not him. Okay. It's not Bagley. All right, then I'm I'm lost for the other two. Tyrese Halliburton. Oh, the you Tyrese boy? Halliburton. He's only his second year, right? He's, this is his second year, and he's nasty, bro. So, like, what? So, the Pacers. You give them two shooters? The Pacers. Who's the third person? So, the, let me. let me. All right, go ahead. So, the My Pacers man. traded away. So, mm-hmm. this is who the Kings get. The Kings get Dante Sabonis, mm-hmm. Jeremy Lamb, and Justin Holiday, or Jeremy Holiday. One okay. of the Holiday brothers. That's solid, though. That's what I'm saying. That's some good stuff to get back. The Kings shipped out. Buddy Heald, Tyrese Halliburton, and Mr. Kardashian himself, Tristan Thompson. What? <laughs> yeah, it's real. That's actually the pictures actually they're not playing around right now. So, like you think about it, like they just made the trade earlier, right? Ricky Rubio's a true point guard. But it's like they got Brockton. And then they just brought they them. do still have Brock. And then they got that's a lot of shooters. And then they got Tyrese Halliburton. So it's like, what are we doing with all these guards? A lot of shooters. There's, these pacers are not done. These pacers are not no. done. I've heard some talks about Miles Turner is on the way out as well. What? Yes. They're bro, they're they are not playing with this fire sale. Like they're doing this the like Yo. the hard way. No, they are going full GM 2K. If this don't work out, I'll just hit reset or don't save it. So they pretty much they replace. Buddy healed with Jeremy Lamb. Mm-hmm. And then now that they have Sabonis, like what happens to Bagley, Rashawn Holmes, Harrison Barnes? I would not be surprised if in the next coming days we see a Harrison Barnes Bagley deal. Because I feel like a lot of people want Harrison Barnes. Mm-hmm. And they're like, if you want Harrison Barnes, you got to take Bagley's ass because we don't want him around here. Yo, this is crazy. I didn't know the Pacers was was moving and shaking like that. No, they're, I don't know what's going on with them, but they are not playing. I they, think they are definitely not playing. I think because of the trade too, they wound up getting like a twenty million dollar trade exception because of they took more money back. It's, it's a it's a wild move when it happened. Oh, because what Buddy's got a crazy contract, right? Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah, the Pacers are doing some stuff, yeah, and again, that sounds some, crazy. There was no picks in that though, which That's, I thought was kind of crazy though. I mean, they just gave you the farm. You want picks too? <laughs> All right. I'm giving up an all star. Like Tyrese Halliburton is not all star. Like he's a lottery pick. Then you didn't give up an all star. But I'll tell you right now, though, uh, a Tyrese Halliburton, Mag- uh, Malcolm Brogdon backcourt. Mm-hmm. First of all, hard to score on. Mm-hmm. And two, I think it's going to be super thorough. Mm-hmm. And worst case scenario, you ha- right on the wing, you have Buddy Heal. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Miles that's Turner crazy. for Julius Randle. Yeah. And Ricky Rubio. <laughs> Why was Ricky Rubio too much? You guys need a point guard, bro. I know. I want De'Aaron Fox. <laughs> I'm not giving up on that, man. I'm not. I don't know. I think getting rid of Tyrese Halliburton kind of like clears up more guard space for De'Aaron Fox. Because it sounds like they want this Sabonis. Because now they're not going to trade for Julius Randle and Sabonis. Like, what the hell does that look like? You look like the Pacers. <laughs> <You're still laughs> like... <laughs> but it's like, you know, like, it seems like De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis is the move. Like, that's that's what they're trying to go with. And I guess they're trying to build around from that. If I was to take a guess. We'll see. I'm going to have my people call their people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, crazy world of basketball. But we will keep an eye on it as yeah. well. Because, you know, like we said, the trade deadline is Thursday. If, if another crazy Sheesh. trade happens, are we going to try to... Pod to get a quick episode in on on uh, what's it called? You can do a quick fifteen minutes on the trade. Yeah, just trade deadlines special. I'm with it. I'm, with it. I'm uh, down we'll for talk whatever. About, we'll talk I'm about. down for whatever. I have your people call my people. There you, about there you go. There you go. Because it'll be done by the time we get out of work anyway. So true that trade deadlines at three p.m. So true that I don't got a game. All right, all right, we'll figure it out. All right, so it's moving on into home cooking. I'm coming home again. Do you think about me now and then? 
Do you think about me now and then? Cause I'm coming home again. It's time for some home cooking. Whipping messy and milk or raisin. <laughs> This is always the last part that gets me. I love it. All right. So I know uh, last pod, I, I was giving a shout out to my goddaughter, Tavy Williams, on her senior night. Um, and the young lady balled out. Last week, messed around and got a triple double. Definitely got a Freaking triple double. Zephyr Wade, like MJ. <laughs> my son tried to argue with me that she was uh, too steel short. I was like, I don't she, know. Whoa, whoa, she got a triple double with steals? With steals, rebounds, and points. Damn, she'll and, pass the ball. And she's a guard. <laughs> She's like no huh? No assists. No, nah, she had like six six dimes. She had like six Ooh, dimes. She was going for the Hakeem Olajuwon triple listen, double. If she had got four more dimes, we was going to Sizzler. <laughs> I don't even know if this Sizzler <laughs> Sizzler is alive anymore. But we you know, Sizzler in that kitchen. We go with Sizzler. Yeah. We go. Oh, that's a, a gem too. I don't have to say that one. But, even on the roll, I'm even on the roll. Yeah, you know. So, but yeah, she um from from my view. Um, she finished with 15 points. My, my son said she has 17. Um, she had 11 rebounds and 10 steals. And he said he thinks she only had eight steals. But there was one play where she stole the ball, kicked it to a teammate. Teammate turned it over. She stole the ball again. I was that's two like, steals. Yeah, that's two steals. That's what I was saying. But um, And like I said, she had like six dimes, driving the paint, kicking it out. You know, the driving kick. People knock down shots. And they won on their senior night. You know, she had a great game, so I was super proud of her. So shout out to. Did she get MVP of that yeah. game? I don't know. If they, I don't think. I don't know if they did MVP for the game. Okay. But if so, it's very clear because even other parents that didn't know her was just like, "Ooh, that girl need to stay in the game." <laughs> <laughs> Every time she sit down, things go bad. It's <laughs> 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 like so. Yeah, she balled out. So it was super dope to see, and she had a lot of supporters there, like her. AU team that she she grew up playing with and coaches were there, mm -hmm. family was there, friends. It was it was pretty dope. Like it was like we we definitely mauled it. Like it was like one girl comes up, mom and dad. Another girl comes up, mom, aunt, dad, grandma. She came up. There was like Tavy's posse come. She was like looking at man, get out of the way. My daughter's like going through, busting in your line, cracking numbers in too. That's what I bring that baby. That's what you gonna do. Come harder than hard, rougher than rough. Rah! That's how they came. That's like I can see. That's how they came. That's like I can see. That's how they came. 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 That's how they I'm, I'm gonna oh show you a picture God. right look now. <laughs> Why y'all look like the ASAP mob? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, you guys, you can't look like you got here. You gotta show the people. Uh, boom! Look, we was Jesus. all out there. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. Y'all look like the opposite team. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> and now. <laughs> But nah, yeah, I was, I was super from proud. Moron super Mountain. The mother, the monster, the mother, the mother, the mother. I see where you at though. I appreciate it. Man. I appreciate it. All right, go ahead and finish the rest of your movie, Chris. Go ahead. That is that is it though. I just did like the whole thing. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So first things first, I'll let you have this one. Uh Dolphins. Dolphins fan. Dolphins finally hired uh their head coach. They get uh Mike McConnell from who's the offensive coordinator for the um San Francisco 49ers. Are you happy? I was. I don't think I was gonna be happy with anybody they got to replace Brian Flores. If I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be a hundred, um, my boy Pythagoras and I, who is a 49ers fan, like we always talk about the 49ers Dolphin connection because somehow, some way, we're always ex either exchanging players or players move like back and forth. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe it's the warm weather cities. Maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but first of all, they were really, really, really trying to pimp the fact that he was biracial, and it bothered me every mm -hmm. time that they did it. It bothered me every time. I was like. Stop stop playing with this man. First of all, he looks like he's 13. You talk about that too. But um, if we're gonna start using some of the offensive schemes that the 49ers are using, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we don't have the running backs to kind of do like a lot of the schemes that they were using there. You don't have a running back, you don't have the tight end, you don't have the What's what, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you're disrespecting Mike Gasecki. Oh, oh, okay. He was one of the. He's like one of the six, seven best tight ends in the league this year. It's only like six or seven nice tight ends in the he's league. He's one of them. He's so one it's of just them. like we got we playing ball and everybody gets picked and your last is like, all right, we got to have even numbers. There right? are 
30 teams in, in the NFL, and he, never, not, he was like not, one of the six best. None of them have a solid tight end. But exactly. ahead, my bad. I ain't going to disrespect so What I'm saying is, like, we have a, a good, at least tight end, and it's like he has a great connection with our quarterback. Mm-hmm. So it's like I can see Gusecki fitting into the George Kittle role. It's like, all right, cool, I see that. But what I'm really excited for is somebody's got to fill the Debo Samuel role. And to me, that has Jalen Waddle written all over it. Oh, and I was like, if that's how we're going to start using Jalen Waddle, I, I would like that. Uh, you I know what I like mean? While Devontae Parker's playing, like the whatchamacallit, be uh, his weight up, though. He's definitely going to have to get his weight up. But while Devontae Parker's playing, like the Brandon Ayuk role, mm-hmm. and the, you know what I mean? Is like, I can, I like the what I think we could see. Cause like, even the 49ers, even though they did have that boy, uh, um, Trent Williams, like they didn't have the best offensive line, mm-hmm. which we also don't have the best offensive line. So like, I feel like he's going to move some things around. And like I think Tua is young enough that he can figure out the system because like they don't do many deep throws. Mm-hmm. Um, like we like that's been the biggest thing on Jimmy G is like his arm strength is nothing mm-hmm. anymore. Like he can't throw the ball, but like he was like, pretty successful. Got they got to the NFC Championship game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think our defense is really good. So it's like you know you package all those things together. We were one game out of the playoffs this year. It's um, excited to see what this team could potentially look like, especially if we're doing. New young coach, he's gonna be around for a while, and like we're gonna do all this other stuff. I guess I'm I'm in. Like there could have been worse. Like I thought, I thought for sure. Like uh, they said that the the second runner up was the the coach from the Cowboys, the Kellen Moore. Mm-hmm. And I was like, please don't bring no cowboy personnel over here. <laughs> so like when I heard he was the second runner up, I was like, I'm glad that we went the way that we went. Let's keep moving. And other uh, coaching news though, Lovey Smith got the got, head, got the head job coach job in Houston. Texas. Yep. Yeah. So that's two black coaches, guys. Keep track. Like, what's up? Like, it's two of the things. They're trying to cover up. They try to make, they make sure to pimp that man out because, like, up. that job is not a good job anyways because no. Deshaun Watson's on his way out. Right. The team is dookie. Right. And it's like, oh, they're just using him as a scapegoat. They're mm-hmm. they're using them to, Come like. get your 100K L. <laughs> I bet. That's what Okay. <laughs> He was like, he's gonna go into that locker room, and be like, clean out your locker. I'm out to get you. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting like, for it, man. I want the Texans to be good because I want Lovey to do well. I want Lovey to do well. I don't know if I want the Texans to do good because I feel like we still got one of their draft picks. So, like, I'll keep being crappy. <laughs> All right. So, um, in other news, Kyler Murray unfollows the Cardinals. Are we reading into it? Like, what do you see from this? I'm just. Where did this come from, by the way? I, this is the new young boy thing. That's what I'm saying. It's like I'm sitting in my room, mad. I don't like how things are going. Unfollow. Like everybody's gonna know what this means. Like, and we kind of do know what that means. I would not mind having a Kyler. I ain't even gonna lie to you. So, with the new, if he, if the rumors are true, and mm-hmm. he is now out there for trade, mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson, Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson, Mm -hmm. Kyler Murray, Mm -hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo, Mm -hmm. Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you already have Derek Carr. Mm -hmm. Who do you want the most? Deshaun Watson. Okay. Second? Aaron Rodgers. Third? Russell Wilson. And then Kyler Murray? So Kyler Murray's still near the bottom. Yeah. Is there something that you haven't seen from Kyler Murray that you don't like? Because I feel like he's kind of Russell Wilson light. I feel he's been real Mm -hmm. indecisive. Okay, I can so see he that. has all the talents to be a Russell Wilson esque type player, mm. but some of his decision making leads to really bad plays. Like that, that the I'm getting sacked in the end zone. I'm not going to take the safety, so I'm going to throw an interception for a touchdown. Like I understand you're young, but like this was his third year in the league. Like fam, like something like, like that. Like wake up, wake up. Like you. Like you got to get it together, and I, that stuff right there is like cringeworthy for me. Like you have when you have all the talent, it's kind of like right. You know, I coach high school basketball, okay. And you have a kid who's super athletic who should just be coming down the middle of the court and dunking on people, and every opportunity that he has to do so, he's back rimming a layup. Like fam, just dunk the ball. This. Like like we did not get two points, and now you tired from running down the court. You did not get back on defense, so not only did we not get two. We gave up two or three, like, like, no, nah, I'm on. So shots are being fired. Yeah, right? man. No, 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 not that, not that, mm-hmm. not that. It's like you get that, you can get that type of kid on any team, anytime, almost every year. You're always gonna have one anytime. super athletic kid who anyway. stop it. Stop it. <laughs> like you're always gonna have a super athletic kid that just has never been coached up to use his talent the right way. You know what I mean, but that's how I feel about Kyler Murray. You know what I mean? To be fair. Mm-hmm. Aside from DeAndre Hopkins, the weapons that he's had, 
Like they did get him Zach Ertz, but it's like beside that, it's like he was throwing to like AJ Green, who hasn't been AJ Green in like three years. I don't care who you Kurt. have to throw the ball to, just make sure they're wearing the same jersey as you. Like his interception numbers, like they skyrocketed second half of the season. And I know after he got hurt, remember well, that was like our thing is like he was our MVP pick for a while. Yep. And then he got hurt, and then he kind of came back, and it was like things weren't the same. And also DeAndre Hunt, DeAndre Hopkins missed like the no. whole second half of the yeah. season. But, I mean, if it's not there, you can't force it because it's just going to make you look bad and you're putting yourself at greater risk of re-injury or greater risk of injury. So it's just like, be smart. This is a learning opportunity, so learn from it. Out of all the guys out there, he's definitely the youngest. Definitely. Um, he also, like, I know we're going to get to it, but, like, he looked pretty solid in the Pro Bowl. I mean, that's not saying much, but I'm just saying. It's intramural basketball. <laughs> Some old, old boy Matt Jones took off for 60 and did the gritty in the back of the end zone. So, that's not the count, though. So, so, I know, but somebody texted me, was like, because hey, somebody was watching the pod, they was like, hey, I think Matt Jones is for the brothers. <laughs> he is not. He is not. That brother <laughs> is sitting. You got to know when somebody's for the brothers or they're just appropriating coaches. His ringtone is like, <laughs> <laughs> Brother is not for yeah. he knows where to put the brothers. <laughs> like, the way he be hanging them receivers out the drive. Oh, he likes man. hanging brothers out. Oh, <laughs> like, oh man, too far not in February. Too, too far. far, too far. But I guess I'm sorry. Too far for February, bro. Right. Too far for any month. In other more somber news, Alvin Kamara um was arrested on battery charges. I'm so tired of hearing. I don't this. know uh and what it's a, it's a lot of the running backs, bro. Like I know you I, like you got to run full speed into other grown men and look like, but it's like, it sounds like I don't know if you've heard like what actually happened in this situation. I do not. It sounds like he was out. He mm-hmm. was going out with his people or whatever. Somebody got a little too crazy, mm-hmm. and apparently he. You say it was another male. It is another male. Whew. Apparently, he tore my man's up, hit him like six times, and then stomped him out. So he did the gritty on that man's head, like. <laughs> <laughs> Was like, he was don't be a menace. Yeah. He was getting sturdy on that joint. Oh. Left for the pole. <laughs> One ring to pull. He was on the top of the head. So like, there's talk that he could potentially face like five years in prison for like this assault charge or something like that. Because it was like apparently the injuries that the dude uh, acquired sustained. sustained yes, mm-hmm. like it was like they were pretty severe. So like I don't know if it's five years probation and something like that. Like I doubt that they're he's gonna, gonna go, go to jail for five years. Yeah, he's gonna have to come off a lump sum of money, and he's just gonna be on a lengthy probation, and he probably won't be with the Saints anymore. <laughs> I, if I was him, I'd be doing the gritty again. I'm like, <laughs> I don't, don't want to be on these Saints, man. There's a Saint watching me. Like, yeah, it's like, like, let's go. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I so, just think that sucks too, though, because like because that's your number one fantasy pick. That, <laughs> but now ultimately, like I should be able to go out somewhere and not have to be approached by every jerk just because I'm Alvin Kamara. And if this was anybody else other than Alvin Kamara, somebody would have put that on World Star. They would have kept it moving, and nobody would have got charged. But because it's Alvin Kamara, this is what he has to go through. So that's that's kind of whack to me. That's literally the worst part of fame, like in yeah. general, is like that's the downside. And like celebrities always talk about is like, yeah, you, like this seems dope, but the other part is dope. Like that's the crappy part. It's like I really just can't go out. And enjoy time without right. like being interrupted. Like being interrupted is just annoying, like in general. But it's like now somebody's telling me, like, yo, man, you you blew my fantasy team, and like, yo, you suck, and then like throwing stuff. Right. Granted, like I don't know if that's then, exactly what took place because the whole report hasn't come out. And then I always ask myself the question, like, where is the designated brain? Yeah, like, there's somebody supposed to be. Like, where's the yeah? Where's the person here that's telling you like, all right, let's get up out of here. Or I'll get into the fight, or where's security? Like, I'm pulling the car up. Like you have to have somebody around you that's willing to take the L. That's not gonna get in trouble. Like you're gonna get in trouble. Like you, you, like you gotta have a ride or die around like that. And if you're not, if you don't, I'm not going out. I'm not going out straight like that. If I know that I have enough money where I can build my own casino. Like what are we doing? Have people come to the crib and chill. I mess around and have a crib with stuff in it, but nothing in it. So I wouldn't even care about people stealing or crashing in there and sleeping or whatever. It's like, I, like, I just, I just don't get it, man. Like you gotta have somebody who supports you. Like, where's the homies that are like, yo, we need to get up out of here because this, this is not it. 
So I don't know. So, I thought that was, it was it's, I think it's whack on several different levels. Well, seeing as this is like brand new, like it only just happened like two days ago. So like obviously we don't have a lot of details. Like I said, the full report mm-hmm. hasn't come out. So like all we're just getting is like things that people have said of what happened. Uh, the video hasn't been released yet. Cause like, that's usually how these things happen is then we get the video. We see what actually um, went down. But like I said, we'll keep an eye on it. And as, as we get more details, we keep you guys posted. Mm-hmm. Um, our last bit of Pro Bowl news or news is the Pro Bowl happened. AFC won for the fifth time in a row. Best division in football. 41-35. Best conference uh, in football. Herbert and Crosby took home the MVPs for Eight. offense and Eight. defense. Eight. Eight. Did you watch? Eight. Nope. How's it say? Because nope. neither nope. did I. And like nope. the, some of the highlights that I did watch, I was like, I'm glad I didn't watch this game. Right. They said all the Raider players ball though, so I thought that was pretty dope. But I still was not. Yeah, because they were like, it. we don't know if we're gonna be back next year. Yeah, <laughs> nah, their brothers is gonna be back. Our um, our new coach has ties to Max Crosby. Man, they said his role is supposed to be getting getting a little better. Okay. So like, what you thought? Well, I guess I, I don't. I hope they answered and put it on the spot. You really want me to? Put him on the pod. I guess this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing right now. I guess for some reason we're talking on the pod. We are potting right now, bro. <laughs> so like, I'm saying, we are potting right now, bro. Not my man. So since both of you out there, I need just look real quick. Just listen. What is this? I don't know. Hey. Hey. I feel like I'm in like a universe where it's like I'm watching me, watching me, watching me. This is also a really weird thing to put in the middle of a pot that's already running pretty low. So what? So what? This is ours. We do what I want to do. Uh, it's not what I want to do. So at that part right there, I need to send you a logo so I can have I sent it to you. It's on your Gmail. The, the logo? I sent everything to you, bro. Where are you? Why do you look like the cover of a Fuji's album? <laughs> Ready or not, you like you here I come. You know you're studying to be the man without a face. I'm in the stoop. Yo, bro. <laughs> Wow, uh, so like just so we see that, yo, Don, on, it's yo, on video. I did not hang on that yo, man. Don, he hung up on you, fam. He hung up on you. You forced me to pick up the call, and yo, then you hung up on him. That about. was wild. Max Crosby. <laughs> oh, that boy got MVP. It don't matter, though. It's the pro is he your favorite reader right now? So this is the dilemma that I've been having. Okay. I always want to get a Raiders jersey. Uh-huh. But I'm always so nervous, too, because... Either the player's making me so upset to where I don't want to wear the jersey, or I don't know if that person's going to be on the team, and I don't want to have a jersey of somebody that I, like that's not there anymore. So I was considering getting a Max Crosby jersey, but I don't know what's going to happen after this contract's up. So this is really crazy that you say this because, mm-hmm. and we are not sponsored by these people at all. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it is uh, Fanatics.com. Mm-hmm. They have what's called uh, jersey insurance. And if you buy a jersey and if in within the next year mm-hmm. that player gets traded or moves to another team, you can exchange that jersey for either any either the new team that he goes to or a new jersey from the same team. Oh, as long as you dope. don't write on it or nothing like that. That's pretty dope. So like yeah, because fanatics, if you want to start sponsoring some people, I could definitely use some new dolphins gear. What up? Yeah, because the last time I went to a game, um, I walked into Marshawn, wifey took a picture with Amari Cooper. And Khalil Mack signed my jersey. All oh, those players was gone next season. Man. I was like, I was oh, like, uh, uh. that's rough. Yeah. Then John Gruden came over with his emails and signed Richie Incognito, and the rest was history. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, I know that uh, my phone has been listening to us and the FBI agents and everybody's peeping. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, they don't steal my ideas and hopefully they want to pay me for my ideas to make the Pro Bowl actually interesting. So that way we can figure this thing out. I also like your idea about calling it the uh, the Madden Bowl and have the all Madden teams. Well, all Madden, that's what I'm saying. And they they definitely stole that too. I, I showed you that, right? I, I said the all Madden thing. And then like the very next day, like on Twitter, people were just like, we should have a team to call it the all Madden. I was like, yo, <laughs> yo, I was, it's like when it's like, what was when, that voice? <laughs> like, we should call them all Madden. Team. <laughs> it's like when you tell a joke. 
and no one really hears you. And then the person behind you says the same joke and everybody falls out and you sit there like, mm -hmm. I just like, mm -hmm. yo, that person. That's all I got to say. You don't like the joke, you just like him. No, you just said it louder. Or like you said oh, it. That's what it is. Yes, oh, yes, yes, you it. It's like, yeah. it's like yeah, Ben said that. Like my cousin, um, he was the first person and like they like he got a real big thing on Twitter where he was just like, you know, they should call the, the performing arts school at um, Howard the Chadwick Boseman School of Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. They just recently named it the Chadwick Boseman wow. School of Performing Arts. And like, he was just like, wow. Come on. Like, wow. you know what I mean? so At like, least invite me. At least invite me. Even Howard's still in front of black man. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I seen them, I seen them tuition fees. They've been stealing from me. I'm sorry. Don't get it twisted. Sheesh. Still a business, Community right? Community college still there. Still a business. Yeah. All right, well, we're nearing the end, but we do have the cultural gem. I don't know if I want to say <laughs> Shine bright like a diamond. Come on. Shine bright. <laughs> so Beautiful hard. like a diamond he's, in the sky. He's so heartbroken. Hold on this one. Thanks to White Rose. TV antennas in the back, the back, the back, the back. Got a diamond in the back, sun rooftop, digging in a scene with a gangster lean. I got the diamond in the back, sun rooftop. <laughs> Hit him with that. Hit him with that. Daddy crate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hit him with that. <laughs> I like it's it. It's ludicrous for y'all to know that, too. It's not really ludicrous. Stop it. <laughs> All right. So, our cultural gem for this episode is none other hey i wrote three down and it's really tough to choose between these three choose your fighter you <sighs> must get one all right i get to say all three anyway so i'm just don't say all three but there's no i'm gonna go in a row i'm just i get to say all three eventually all right so this week we're going with new jack city all right if you have not seen new jack city pause the video find a mirror smack yourself Come back, sit down, unpause the video while I tell you what it is. All right, are, you gonna, see you are they smack themselves with the mirror? Like, <laughs> oh, they gotta watch the smack, smack yourself smack with themselves. something. No, do the baby powder, <laughs> smack yourself. Damn. But, um, yeah, so New Jack City is, um, if you haven't seen this movie, then you just sit your five out last guy before I make change. Like that, yeah. So, this is this one is starring, um, Wesley Snipes. Yo, I thought you were about to forget. I was like, no, oh. Wesley Snipes. You got Mario Van Peebles. You got Ice T. You got uh, Dunn Man, which plays Radio Raheem and Do the Right Thing. Um, He's very big in all Spike Lee movies. R.I.P. too. I think he passed away. He did. Um, G Money. G Money was in. Is Mario Van Peebles? Isn't he? No, no, no. I'm tripping. No. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Yeah, you are definitely tripping. I'm tripping. G Money um, is. I think he was in House of Pain, the Tyler Perry show. That you keep getting that brother confused with that dude. Am I? It's not, him, not him. All right, my yeah. bad. Um, Chris Rock is in this movie. Um, with a performance of his career. Definitely, definitely. As Pookie. As Pookie, he plays the crackhead who gets rehabilitated, who also relapses. Oh wow! You know, Spoiler alert. Um, nah, it's it's in the movie. Like that's literally the first thing you see. Nino Brown is a drug kingpin. G Money is his brother. They have um. A group called um, CMB, which is the Cash Money Brothers, and they're they're hustling out of a building called the Carter. Ice T plays the cop who's trying to uh, infiltrate and arrest the the Cash Money Brothers, and it's, it's just a really dope movie, really dope movie. So if you haven't seen it, again, pause this video. <laughs> Why do they have to smack themselves before they watch it? Slap yourself, and then sit down. Where and can it they again. watch it? Ooh. Yeah, hey, man, you stay tripping on the people. I will. I will you say you stay tripping on the people. <laughs> I do. I do uh, believe that not only is it a career-defining performance for Chris Rock. Yeah, I was three. So, like, Jeez. not only is it a career-defining performance from Chris Rock, it's quite possibly Wesley Snipes' best role. And he, um, Nino Brown is one of the greatest. Alan Payne, and he is definitely in the Tyler Perry show, House of Pain. Okay, all right. Sorry. Just saying, my bad. Uh, Nino Brown is one of the greatest villains in history. Like, mm -hmm. movies, TV, vi like, whatever villains you want to talk about. Like, obviously, superheroes are their own thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, Nino Brown is different in this movie. And he's a villain that, like, not only do we not get to see a lot back then, but, like, definitely they weren't letting black people play. No. So, like, the fact that, like, he was so raw and stuff like that, like, mm -hmm. like Wesley was really... Both Lee Rose was by two, two black males. It's pretty dope. It's 
pretty dope. So definitely check that one out. I would say almost every drug movie and uh, drug TV show that you watch probably got a lot of the stuff that they got from New Jack City. Like definitely. just like, you know, showing like the women with the no clothes on while they bagging the, like, you know, like definitely. a lot of that stuff, like they've taken in there. Definitely. And one of the greatest movie soundtracks of all time, because not only did this, not only did this movie, was it fire, but it birthed the new Jack Swing because yes. Teddy Riley Thank did you. the entire, what you call it? In the movie alone, you have Flavor Flav, Fab Five, Freddy, Keith Sweat, like Heavy D, Heavy D like, come on, man. Come on, man. But like when, when Teddy Riley did, did that new music, like he didn't even know what to call it. And they were like, yo, you've got to call it something. And he was just like, yo, listen, like this movie's New Jack City. Let's just call it the New Jack Swing. And that's how they moved it. One of my favorite songs, is it good to you? I like it. Is it good to you? Ooh, oh, oh. No, you did it. <laughs> I mean, it don't matter if it does it for you. Do you know I mean? There's a heavy D version. I got to say, I like the version without heavy D on it. I like the one with just the girls on it. I think she goes off. Yeah, nah, you are. <laughs> and I love the overweight lover. Don't get me wrong. Hey, hey, that was one of the first, hey. one of the first big dudes. First of all, not only just big dude, light skin dude, but big light skin dude that could dance. He was mm -hmm. out there moving his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he was moving in them shiny ass. I was like, let's hey, get it. What's it going to be? <laughs> Fatty cake, Fatty cake. <laughs> <laughs> My little buttercup. Was all red and violence all blue. <laughs> Oh yeah, he wasn't the best rapper, right. but man, I was down. And Diddy knew exactly. But, what he, but he also like gave a lot, um, a lot of recognition to help people get their career started. So, oh, one hundred percent, he was big on that. He yeah. is a, a helping hand to a lot definitely, of folks. Definitely. And I also have another coach or gym already on the docket that Heavy D is also in. Oh, Ooh, no, if somebody excited. get in the comments and tell me what it is before I bring it up. I'll give you a free shirt. Boom, straight like that. Yeah, but we gotta talk about this, bro. We gotta split the profits. We talk. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> he said you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anything else? Do you have a raisin that? I do have a raisin that. Oh, ooh, ooh. Tonight's raisin that is just let it go. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. Don't don't be afraid to let stuff go. I think so so many times we're trying to hold on to something that maybe even be for us and it's just making things worse than it is better. And I know the fear of transitioning and doing something differently than what you've been doing your entire life is scary and not having that or the fear of the unknown is a very shaky place to be in, but you never know the type of stuff that comes from the letting go of something that could be hindering you. And that's in several situations. It could be your employment. It could be someone that's around you. It could be something that you're spending your time with that you should not be spending your time on. Or maybe it just needs to be less time. Like, don't be afraid to let something go. There are several situations in which something has taken away in order for something else to grow. All right. So you got to think about that. I, I know one of the things that, that first helped me learn this was like seeing like wildfires in the forest and like everything getting burnt up, but then seeing everything that grows from that land being burnt up and like why that is a tragedy. And it's like a very uh, hectic safety risk for the people around it. Like sometimes it's needed in order for something new to grow. I think when you first uh, started saying, let it go, um, obviously I was singing a song, but like uh, <laughs> the first thing that I thought of is like, how many people that we know are like not here because they couldn't let something that wasn't that important go. <laughs> Like how many people's sneakers got yeah. stepped on and then now we're yeah. sending, we're putting flowers on their casket, yeah. like stuff like that. Um, but then I took it like to the next level where it's like, sometimes you got to let just things go. Cause like, you got to think about like people that you don't talk to mm -hmm. anymore because of certain stuff or whatever. And then sometimes like when you let that thing go and you keep on going, cause like there's three sides to every story, right? Like mm -hmm. there's your side, there's their side. And then there's like the actual truth. And sometimes mm -hmm. like when you let things go and you give it space, like sometimes you come to the understanding of like why, that thing had to be the way it was. And then you could kind of take it at that point in time and figure out like the level of severity it actually is. Cause like half the time you don't really need these people or you don't really need to do these things, but it's like, we want them there because they bring us something like some sort of joy. And like, sometimes people are going through stuff too and it's not fair. Um, maybe fair is not really the word, but like putting like 
their pain and like their stuff and they're going through like you're not helping them out like they're trying to figure their stuff out too so like putting two negative things like don't equal a positive so right. sometimes it's just let it go and then let time heal it and then like maybe they'll come back around maybe they won't and you know I, mean? I think it's way better to heal than to sit in pain for the rest of your life that's true so i don't have I a nasty got, nugget no nasty nugget it's been a while i don't I have to put some ownership on you mm. He said, hmm. Well, maybe, maybe I'll start bringing some of these uh these topics that a lot of females keep bringing. Like, why don't y'all talk about this? Like, maybe I'll start bringing that those. Would like, be my perfect. Next I don't have a problem with that. These relationship talks. We'll oh, start yeah. doing you some need, of that. Listen, you know, I man, listen. First of all, they just be tripping. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because you, you know what I meant though. That was a strong day, right? Like, you know, they be tripping. Yo. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I just ain't trying to ruin some stuff I got going on. <laughs> hey, listen, and I ain't got no days. This is just one. <laughs> so, but, yeah, well, right. well, I'll, I'll come up with something. I'll come up with a couple that I feel like I, I actually you. want to throw your way. I trust you. It's a bad move. I trust you. I'm going to knock that joint out. <laughs> Yo, bro, that way, you want to talk yeah. about like how my hands was close? Yeah. That was like, I felt I felt like the ring. Like the, cold, <laughs> like the coldness from your ring. I felt like. <laughs> All right, well, episode 25 is a wrap. All right. Bye, bye, bye. Hey, I like.